Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illa Allah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wal'aqibatu lil-muttaqeen. Wassalatu wassalamu ala ashrafin l-anbiya. سليم نبينا ومولانا محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم إنا نسألك علما نافعا وعملا صالحا ولسانا ذاكرا وقلبا خاشعا ورزقا حلالا طيبا مباركا يا كريم يا فتاه يا مولانا يا رب العالمين ربنا هب لنا من ازواجنا وذرياتنا قرة اعين واجعلنا للمتقين اماما ربنا ظلمنا انفسنا وان لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار وقنا عذاب النار وقنا عذاب النار سبحان ربنا رب العزة عما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله والحمد لله رب العالمين. Most respected brothers and elders, mothers and sisters, all praise belongs to Allah سبحانه وتعالى. Our Creator, Sustainer, Nourisher and Provider that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that has given us bounties beyond our imagination. If a person tries and count the bounties that he has bestowed upon us, Allah says لا تحصوها It is impossible to do so. The biggest bounty Allah has given us is Iman. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us for not seeing Iman as our biggest bounty. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open up our eyes and our hearts and our ears towards Him and that we be amongst those that gain the rida of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the happiness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we are successful in this life and in the life hereafter. My respected brothers and elders, please listen very attentively as we have very little time. We mentioned last week that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives mankind all the opportunity to recognize Him. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that He has given us in this short life every opportunity to recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are those who recognize Allah and there are those that do not recognize Allah. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us from those who recognize Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There are temptations upon temptations, stress upon stress, worry upon worry, mind upon mind. But remember that every creation has been created with a purpose and mankind has been created for a greater purpose. Illa li'abudun, only but to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us Fridays. He gives us the night to make tahajjud. He gives us the five maktubat, five daily prayers. He gives us zakat. He gives us the two eat. He gives us all of these opportunities. لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Perhaps we will be able to obtain taqwa. We will be able to obtain god fearness We will be able to obtain weary of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We will be able to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The further we get away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the further we get away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our equations, in our definitions, the word fear does not fill the gap in our definition of fearing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Happiness in our life 
that connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not become part of our definition. It becomes a sideline when we want to, when we can. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to allow us to rely us. And that's why we ask in our du'as, Allahumma ahdi. Allahumma ghfir li mu'minina wa mu'mina. We ask Allah ta'ala to forgive us, male and female. We ask Allah ta'ala to guide us every day. Why? Because if we are not part of those who are guided, then we are part of those who are astray. My respected brothers and elders, we've been speaking about Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. And last week we spoke about Allah ta'ala telling Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam, إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ قَالَ أَسْلَمْ تُلِرَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ what made Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam so significant, so great, that when we say, Ya Allah, send salutations and peace upon Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasalam and his family, we say, Kama sallayta ala Ibrahim, like you send salutations and you bless Ibrahim and the family of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, that he is the only one that was called Khalilullah, the friend of Allah, because he put aside everything that the West, everything that the society was saying and he put and he devoted only to that which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We mentioned last week how difficult it is and we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for us. We mentioned that the first tackle is family and there is no one that is more dear than our father and mother. We spoke about the burning when they made this massive catapult put Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam into the, into the catapult and shot him and he's looking at his father. The mind cannot fathom that someone as dear as one's father could ever allow this to happen to one's son. But he said, Hasbunallah, Hasbunallah wa ni'ma al-wakil, Allah is sufficient for me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made fire that we define as hot and that destroys and kills. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kuni bardan wa salaman ala Ibrahim. Become not only cool for Ibrahim, but become peaceful for Ibrahim alayhi salatu wa salam. This comes down to another ayah. Wa man yattaqillah, yaja'annahu makhraja, wa yarzukhu min haythu la yahtasim. Allah ta'ala says, the one that has, <coughs> the one that has faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one that is conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, يَجْعَلَّهُ مَخْرَجًا Allah will make a way for him وَيَرْسُقْهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ And he would provide in ways with means but also Allah will open up doors without means. And this is an example of the life of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Today I want to talk about two stories that Allah mentions in the Quran. Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Why is the entire ritual of Dhul Hijjah whether it be udhiya, slaughtering, or whether it be hajj, is attributed towards Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam was amongst people in Babylon. They were those that were, that were uh, worshipping the celestial body, the stars, the moon, the sun. And they were those who were worshipping the idols. So one day, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam having that love and having that passion for his people to basically make them understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the only one to be worshipped. Everything else is his creation. He sees the stars one day and he sees the people, the celestial body, then celebrate, they're basically worshipping the stars. And he says, the stars are so big. Look how beautiful they look. Look how scattered they are in the sky. Ahada Rabbi. Is this my Lord? And the people looked up at the stars and says, Wow, these stars are amazing. But when the day came and overpowered the stars, he said, That can't be my Lord. My Lord has to be the being that is always with me. Otherwise, for one moment, I will not be in existence. The next day, he saw the moon. The moon was so bright, so beautiful, so big. He looked at the people and said, Is this our Lord? Look how amazing this is. Look at the, it's glowing, it's radiant. Look at the color that shined. It's the most perfect glow that you can find. The people said, yes, this makes sense. But when the day came again and there was no moon anymore, he said, how can this be our Lord? And then he saw the sun and the sun was so bright that it overwhelmed the night and made everything bright. 
made the, 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 the grass grow. It made the flowers open up. It allowed people to be, be warm. And he said, Ahada Rabbi, is this my Lord? But when he saw something insignificant, like the night overpowered the day, he said, this cannot be my Lord. La ilaha illallah. There is only one Allah. There is only one deity. So those who worshipped the celestial body, they had no answer for Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Then one day, his father being from amongst them, they used to worship different idols and they had this festival where they would go out in the outskirts of the city. And Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam's father, Azab, comes to him and says, Ya Ibrahim, will you be coming with us? Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam says, Ana saqim, I am sick, I will not be able to go with you. So when all the people left the town, and Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam was alone in the village, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam took an axe. And he marched his way to the temple. There was this big temple in Babylon where people were worshipping the idols. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam saw amongst them that there were creatures like mouse, mice and rats and flies that were eating the food of the idols that the people had left for, for, for these gods. And he said, look, there's a fly on your food. Why don't you shoo it away? But as we all know, the idols cannot talk. Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam is showing us it is permissible for us to use logic. And even if we use logic, you will find at the end there is something greater than logic. What people believe or defined as science 100 years ago, ask a scientist 100 years ago if he has the qualification to go and teach at our university. They will say, sorry, my friend, you don't have the qualifications because science in today's time has its own definitions. We have discovered new things. Would you say that 100 years ago people wasted their life? Because that's what it means. That scientist that lived 100 years ago and was called a professor or a doctor or, or, or someone that was a genius and they said, oh teacher, oh sir, and they looked up to him. That man, 100 years, when he comes into our life and he goes into Griffith University, UQQUT, hands him, puts on a tie, puts on a tie, goes there, walks the walks, talks the talk, and he goes there and he gives his certification. He says, what's this? Oh, I learned about the moon. It's round. And the earth is also round. It's not flat. What are they going to do with that guy? So are you telling me 100 years ago, all those who lived live for nothing? So every time mankind comes with new knowledge, all of a sudden they start to find that they're greater than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. La ilaha illallah, hasbunallah. Hasbunallah. But this is the arrogance of mankind. As soon as they know something, they feel this, 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 this dominance that they're great. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, control the heart, control the heart. Aba wa stakbar, wa kana min al If you have the qualities of arrogance and pride, you can see truth, but you cannot see truth. You can see, you can hear, you can feel, but you can't see, you can't hear, and you can't feel. It's straight in your face, but you are deaf, dumb, and blind. And this is what's happening to the people of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. This is what's happening to the people of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. They saw the truth, but their arrogance and their pride stopped them. So Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, he's looking at the mouse and he says, Aren't you going to stop? He's talking to the guards. You're not going to stop the mouse from eating your food. It's such a, it's a mouse. If you move, it'll move. If you move, it'll move. You don't need much power and might to, to move the sun and the moon and the stars. All you're going to do, move a little bit and the, and the fly will disappear. It couldn't do that. So Ibrahim والسلام, took an axe and he started to chop and break every idol and he left one idol. He took the axe and he hanged the axe around the neck of the big one and he went away. The people from the town, they come back and they said, you know what, we have to give rights to the guards that we left behind. They go into the temple and all of them are about to faint. Why? They can't imagine. Oh my gosh, someone has destroyed our guards. He wants them to think. Look at the words that they're saying. It doesn't make sense. Oh my gosh, someone has come and destroyed our guards. Who is this? And they start to quarrel amongst each other. Until one person says, I know who has done this. There is one person in our town that is very against our gods. It can only be him. They say, who is this man? 
Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Fetch Ibrahim. They call Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Ibrahim comes very calm, comes to him to the people. His father is from amongst them. And he's, the people say, did you do this? Did you do this? Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam looks around. He sees the X on, on, the, on the big idol. He says, look, it's the big one. And I say, Ibrahim, come on. You know our idols can't move. You know our idols can, well, doesn't have the power or the ability to do this. And then they bit their tongue. You know what that means in English? You want to swallow what you just said because they realize out of... And this is what happens when you're angry. And that's what they do in the courts, the lawyers. They make you angry, angry until the truth comes out. It spills out. So logic plays the best now. And truly what's in the heart comes out. Logically, what they believe does not make sense. My respected brothers and elders, let's pause for one second. All of us are looking at these, these idol worshippers and saying, how foolish were they? The question is, how foolish are we? When we look at a dollar, an Aussie dollar, an Australian dollar, and there's a value to it, and we work from the early mornings, <coughs> from the early mornings we get up, from my house, I can hear the trucks already at four o'clock. I can hear the trucks moving at four o'clock. When I drive my car, I see the sun hasn't come out yet. But there are people in the train. You can see everyone standing there. Everyone having the energy and the power, even if they're tired, even if they're lethargic, even if they want to be at home. There's sacrifice that comes because of the dollar. Families are broken up. Brothers that live together. You can't choose your family. But families are broken off because of this piece of paper that you can't rip anymore in Australia. Ooh, I remember going to South Africa and studying. And uh, one of my teachers called me and says, have you got an Australian dollar? I said, yeah. I said, no, Australian dollar, five dollars. So I took a five dollar out and I gave it to him. He's like, Allah, what? But everyone started coming around. No, no, no. It, it doesn't rip, it doesn't rip. This is in the 1990s. Hey, this doesn't rip. Oh, wow, wow. Because the rents, the paper. So they were, they, were, they were blowing away Australian money. It, it can't rip. There's so much significance around sacrifice. Families are broken. Ladies divorcing men because he wants his money. Fathers, sons coming up to me and saying, Imam, is there any chance I can get my father's inheritance before he passes away? <laughs> How do you go up to your dad? Something when your father passes away, you want it once alive. All for what? For money. For money. So when we look at Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, and we see Ibrahim, I mean, how can these people believe in these idols? What's the difference between the idols and the money that we worship into this time? I mean, this is real. What's the difference? What's the difference when we act in front of people, sophisticated and smart, in front of people, when nobody is there, then the true me comes out. What's the difference? That logically doesn't make sense unless I have bipolar. So who I am in public and who I am in, in secret is a different person. When the wife says, no Imam, you don't know him. When he's in public, he's like this. When you should see him at home, he's different. Where's the logic in that? Where, where is the logic in this, my brothers? So this is what Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam is trying to do. He's trying to rationalize with the people. That what you are worshipping and killing and fighting and cheating and doing the impossible to do, it's not worth it. It's not worth it if, if we have forgotten Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we have forgotten Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, tell me what currency, whether it's the petrol dollar, whether it's the petrol dollar, whether it's the Australian dollar, whether it's the British pound. Can any of this help us when we close our eyes? Can any of us remember what happened a week ago? Moment by moment. I'll give you 24 hours and you tell me what you did in 24 hours. Can there be value in something that we can't even remember? None of us want to think about this because we've become a nation that's just going with the flow. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put five daily prayers, maktubah, 
compulsion upon us to remind us, hey, there's a bigger purpose than the worries and stresses that you have accumulated in your day. There's a bigger worry that you have. There's a bigger purpose for what you have than what you have made your purpose in your life. Wallahi, I promise you, if we have that consciousness and that reality, that logic of something greater than the time that we spend here, half the crimes will not be committed. Half the families will get back together again. We will have no worries and no stress in our life. Qalbun Salim, a sound heart. You want to go to have a barbie? You want to go fishing? You can go fishing in peace. You can do whatever you want in peace if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in our life. Wallahi, if Allah is in our life, if, uh, if Allah is not in our life, and we live in the biggest palace, the biggest palace, have the fanciest car, beautiful children, and we expect happiness by Allah, ask that man who's not happy. Ask that man who's not happy. Us Muslims have not realized this. That is why the mosque is not full. That is why the masjids are not full. That is why people are still missing their prayers. Why? Just like the idol worshippers in the time of Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, they had forgotten and they are far-fetched from reality. There is no logic in what they do. Ask ourselves the question I conclude. Is it logical in what we are doing? Leave asking for a miracle and not leave that. Let's, let's just talk base, basis. Is there logic in what we are doing? Buy a house, take a mortgage, it's $400,000, a basic house in today's time. Disobey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and then you own the house when you're 60 years old. Because the interest rate is sitting at 5%. Some of them say, you know what, we just use it as a time to take out money from it. They never see the purpose of that house. But what? Our parents told us, if you don't own a house, you're unsuccessful. We never stop to think, hang on, is it true? If I don't own a house, I'm not successful. What makes me successful when I own a house? If I drive the fanciest car, what makes me successful? If everyone is happy with me, are they going to go to bed with me? Are they going to celebrate my happiness? My dear brothers, I only ask you today, logically ask yourself, is it logical what I'm doing? And that is what Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam was asking the people of the idols until they bit their tongue. Let us be part of those, my respected brothers and elders, that whilst we are alive, it is better to bite our tongue in this world than to pull our tongue on the day of Qiyamah. Let us be part of those who come close towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and realize there's bigger purpose than this money. Today, there's some value. Tomorrow, look at Sri Lanka, no value in the money. Overnight, how long do we work for that dollar and then it becomes no value for it? And then what do we run for? Logically speaking, this is what Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam is doing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive me, forgive you. May Allah ta'ala guide me and guide you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to open up our eyes, open up our ears and open up our hearts. Sirat al-ladheena an'amta alayhim until we're on the path that Allah is happy with us. And not on the path of those, Allah's anger and wrath is upon them. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our duas and may Allah ta'ala accept our wishes. And alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.